November 8, 1946. Viola Desmond, an entrepreneur from Halifax, is on a business trip when her car breaks down in New Glasgow, Nova Scotia. Forced to stay overnight, Desmond decides to pass the evening at the movies. She buys her ticket and enters the downstairs auditorium. The ticket seller followed her into the theater and stopped her and said, you can't sit here. You can't sit on the main floor. She went back and she said, I'd like a main floor ticket, please. And the white ticket seller said to her, we don't sell main floor tickets to you people. In a spontaneous decision, Desmond turns and enters the downstairs theater. The manager is called, and a policeman. She's very small, very feminine, very elegant woman. And this white, burly police officer grabbed her by the shoulders and physically dragged her out of the theater onto the street. She's thrown in jail, and she's left there for 12 hours. She was probably in a state of shock. I mean, you're stunned. What, what could I have done to deserve this? In 1946, Viola Desmond is a woman ahead of her time. She owns a hair salon, a beauty school, and her own line of beauty products. She was a thriving businesswoman. Um, her own car, her own shop, her own school. She had visions just to expand across the province. But despite Desmond's personal success, racism and discrimination continuously undermine the human rights of black Canadians. Segregation means separate. And blacks and whites were separate. The racism in the United States was truly in your face. In Canada, the racism is very polite. It's sort of undercover. Communities like Halifax's Africville are neglected, deprived of routine services given to white communities. Blacks are denied admission to businesses, and many schools and neighborhoods are segregated. But racist policies in Canada aren't fixed. They vary with the time, the place, and the context. Some of the black people in Canada have said it was actually worse in some ways in Canada because you never knew when you went into a restaurant or a theater, was it segregated or not. After spending the night in jail, Desmond is brought to trial the following morning. She's not given her rights. She's not told she can have representation. And she was found guilty of defrauding the government of one penny one cent, the difference between the upstairs and downstairs amusement tax. And nobody admitted it was about race segregation. It was all just about tax evasion. Desmond appeals with support from prominent members of the Halifax black community. Ultimately, the case goes before the Nova Scotia Supreme Court, which refuses to reverse the conviction. She described herself as bitterly disappointed. The impact on her was severe. Before this incident, she was just somebody in the prime of her career. She could go very far. It seemed like it all stopped on that day. Desmond gives up her dream of a chain of beauty salons. Her marriage disintegrates, and eventually she leaves Halifax. She's clearly a heroine, but it's not easy for heroines. She paid a great deal, personally, for this case. I think Viola Desmond's impact on racial inequality was a great one. It opened up the doors and gave people that opportunity to say, you know what, we're going to stand up and we're going to fight for our rights. In the decades that followed, groups like the Black United Front and the Nova Scotia Association for the Advancement of Colored People continued the fight for black equality in Canada. In 2010, Lieutenant Governor Mayanne Francis gives Desmond a posthumous free pardon, an admission by the government that she was wrongly convicted. It took all these years for a woman of color 
to free her. And my only hope is that she's at peace. <laughs>